Hello, beautiful people. My name is LaVon Nichols from Fun Times Magazine, and we are here with another amazing interview today. And this is going to be around mental health. And so we are going to be doing a series of interviews. And so I'm so glad that you're tuned in for this particular one. We have an amazing person to interview. We'll be talking to a teacher in the Philadelphia area. Her name is Teacher Kirby Gladys. Gaddis. Gaddis. Yeah, you got Gaddis. it. Okay. <laughs> I listen, you guys know me. I don't like to mess anybody's name up. So, you know, always feel free to correct me because we want to make sure we get it right. But we're so glad that you are joining us today. We have some questions um, for you, but we're doing this specifically because it is Mental Health Awareness Month. And so we decided to take um, the mental health perspective in an occupational way and talk to people because we know everyone is dealing with, you know, stress and different factors within their occupations. And so that's how uh, Fun Times Magazine has chosen to attack mental health awareness because everyone is dealing with something and we want to talk to people in certain professions this month. And it's also teacher month. Um, and so, you know, we're just very happy to be able to celebrate you as well. Um, so we're bringing them all together. So thank you so much for uh, joining us today. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for having me. This is a, a big topic that needs to be addressed and you guys are doing it such a great way. So I'm so excited to be a part. Thank you so much. And if you, whatever you can share, if you would like to tell people just a little bit about your uh, professional background as a teacher, um, whatever you feel comfortable uh, sharing. Oh, sure. So my name is Kirby. Um, I have been teaching now. I have been in a classroom since I was 19. So I'm probably giving my age, but I've been um, a lead teacher now for my 12th year. Um, and so I'm just really excited. I tutor um, anything that I do outside of teaching. It still revolves around kids. Um, I run the children's program at my church. Um, my son is highly involved with his baseball team. So I'm the team mom with all the snacks and screaming. Um, I run a summer camp. And so any way that you think of kids um, just being really poured into, uh, just to see you feel um, loved and seen. Um, I'm probably somewhere trying to help figure that out. <laughs> wow. So you are in there with the kids and, you know, in very different aspects of, you know, working with kids in an educational setting, maybe a more fun setting, but still you have a, 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 a large array of background with um, kids. So you're just the type of person we want to talk to you about <laughs> because you are educating our kids and giving them, you know, all these resources, things that they're going to have for a lifetime. But we know mm -hmm. that in a the classroom, there's a lot of stuff that happens in the classroom and a lot of things that our teachers are um, going through. And so we want to talk just a little bit more about that. Um, so one of the questions I have, like what types of pressures or um, stresses do you um, encounter um, during your time in the classroom? And so we're also going to talk about it in reflection to the pandemic, because that encountered a lot of um, a different type of stress. So we're in the classroom now, but you know, even during the pandemic. Yeah, just naturally being a teacher, um, you just want to do a good job. You know, you only have the students for a certain amount of time. And so you're really molding them, teaching them new things. I teach first yeah. grade. And so I have many students coming in, oh, I can read a sentence so I know how to read. And it's just gently popping the bubble that says, okay, you can read a simple sentence, but now I need you to read multiple sentences and yeah. you know just getting all the foundation facts first grade um honestly is one of the biggest uh how can i put it academic curves i don't want to mm. give my other uh <laughs> out there. Um, but it's really the foundation of how do you put your letter sounds together how do you add um in kindergarten you're going from counting to 20, but by second grade, you need to be able to count add to 120. So it right. really is a big gap. Um, and so that's just where it falls in. So for me, it's really just making sure that I do a good job the time that I have them um, because September starts, but then December hits so fast in the classroom. And then once you come back from Christmas break, 
you have all the fun holidays come and then you right. get that testing and, you know, the state testing that comes with it. Um, so it's really just, am I doing my best? Am I doing a great job? Are they going to be ready? Am I failing them? Yeah. Are my parents <laughs> nervous? Um, there is their first time. Uh, I'm a parent as well. So as I was saying, you're giving your precious gift to me to take care and to mold and to partner with you. So in my mind, I'm just, okay, am I partnering with my parents well? Am I living up to their expectation? Am I doing what I'm supposed to do? Is my principal pleased with what I'm doing? <laughs> you know, all of that just comes into play. And then also with the mental health part, am I doing what, you know, my best? Am I taking care right. of them? Am I doing my lesson plans well, which I tend to struggle with, if I can be honest? Um, yeah. so just all of that just kind of balls into one big uh, <laughs> bubble that never goes away. <laughs> Wow. So you just listed all of the pressures that you have to you know, your your pressure that you put on yourself to want to be your best for your students. Then you got the students like looking at you with their little eyes, like educate me with all their other things that they got going on, their parents. Then you got the school system. So you have lots of pressures. And I mean, I, I have been in the classroom myself. And so can you mm -hmm. kind of tell us how that pressure was um, intensified by the pandemic. Were you able to teach during the pandemic? I was. So the school where I was teaching, um, I had been there for about 10 years um, and that school shut down because mm. of the pandemic it was not able to sustain. And so I found my next job and that's when I did both at the same time teaching first grade. Yes. I had students in front of me and also students on the screen um, that chose to stay home because their parents were uncomfortable with sending them in. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was a challenge in itself. I'm having right. to wear a mask. And if you know anything about being around children, you are repeating yourself all day. And so trying to teach through a mask and um, at a point in time, we had a microphone and making sure my students in front of me on a screen can hear but also I'm giving attention to the students who are physically in front of me. Um, it just took a toll. Honestly, it took a toll. Also thinking of the health factors of my family. Mm, my yeah. parents, uh, they both ended up catching COVID. My dad, who I have never seen sick in my entire life, had to go to a hospital. And so it's just dealing with all of that happening while also keeping me and my son safe, um, trying our best not to catch it. Um, right. It was just, it was a lot. Pandemic was a lot. Um, a lot of students um, in the education world kind of just got pushed to that next grade because the pandemic hit around March um, where they kind of started to shut schools down. Um, and if your school did not handle that well, um, mm -hmm. work was still not being handed out or if it was kind of just, you know, left up to you and your parents. Um, a lot of students were still just pushed through to the next grade. Mm. A lot of students kind of fell underneath that curve of um, they kind of should have gotten summer school to, you know, help mm. them with skills. But I can only imagine how my parents were feeling as well, because our parents never had to go through a pandemic before. So we were really just trying to figure it out and do what we can to survive, honestly. Um, yeah. So that was that was a toll of trying to see where my students were, um, recognize the gap of where they should be, and mm -hmm. then trying to get them prepared for the next grade. And so um, I know how I felt, and also speaking with you know my other um, coworkers, that was just trying to figure out how can we do this well, um, mm. but overburden the families, not stress the children out because. We have them for a certain amount of time, but they have a completely um, different life when they go home, responsibilities that they have. So just really trying to do that well and not only just taking care of us, but taking care of our students as well. And this is why we have, and I said earlier, teacher month. It's teacher appreciation. appreciation. Um, I feel like it should be uh, the whole month. And if it is a whole month, but I believe in May, it's a, an actual week. I do feel like it should be the whole year. Um, <laughs> because yeah. just what you said, like there's a lot of different factors that go into being an educator, especially like just 
being an educator regularly, you know, on a regular course of a day, but then during a pandemic, you know, you're faced with your own health, you know, trying to be, you know, healthy for yourself, for your 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 children, your your family, and then trying to educate kids online and in the classroom. So some people had the luxury of either having one or the other. You did both. And so um, kudos to you. Uh, <laughs> kudos Thank to you, you for surviving, you. Um, <laughs> surviving that. So how did you cope with that? Like, give us some of the things that you did to, you know, decompress during, especially during the pandemic time. And, and now, what are you doing now? Um, so during the pandemic time, me and my son, uh, we binge watch shows. <laughs> that was our time to just reconnect, um, kind of just escape the real world. And, you know, we would have our movie dates and our hangout dates. There was a point in time where I did catch it. And so we would just uh, sync our devices together so we could still watch it together. Um, music really helped, just like that calming, like white noise or just artists that I like to just kind of zone out. Um, honestly, Prayer was a huge, huge, huge um, yeah. uplifting moment for me. Um, as I said, I'm highly involved with my church. And so thankfully, my church did um, services online. And mm -hmm. we still were able to, you know, be in the word. And so that was amazing. Um, but my faith definitely helped me through. I knew um, that I could bring my stresses to God and he would look right. at me. And so that played a huge part. But even now, just recognizing when I start to feel overwhelmed mm -hmm. um, and then just taking a step back. Uh, there was a point in time where I was waking up two, three o'clock in the morning and just could not go back to sleep. At mm. all. And I started to realize it was me being anxious. And so not knowing what the next day is going to be, not knowing how my students are going to come in, um, if one of their family members caught it and now they have to stay home, now having to get their work prepared, send that home. Like it was just at one point I started the day with um, 16 students. And by the end of that day, I had eight because their parents were calling saying someone caught it in their family and oh, wow. they needed to go home. So for me, <laughs> um, yes, music my prayer life, my church family really jumped in. Um, my pastors would drive to houses and drop off packages and uh, Uber Eats was amazing. Mm. <laughs> but just that time to recognize when I started to feel anxious and then just recognizing when to take a step back, um, mm -hmm. which is really hard to do. And there's so much happening. Um, right. I was always one to just always be on go, always say yes. Um, who needs me, always ready to be available. Um, mm -hmm. But there was a point in time where I really had to take a step back and recognize the triggers that I had. Mm -hmm. I feel like there was also a lot added into culture-wise um, during the pandemic as well that I had to learn to take a step back from um, taking breaks from social media. Uh, that That's was a one. big one. That was huge. Um, and just reading, like finding... Uh, good books that will uplift me, um, mm -hmm. but also good books that I can just read through. Um, my son calls it, I jump into my book world. And so, mm -hmm. I say, hey, I need 30 minutes and then I'm going to check on you and then I'm going to do another 30 minutes. Um, but just escaping uh, reality in a sense, um, just decompressing and, you know, calming my body and then being ready to go. Okay, I hope that the teachers that are listening and even really anyone, you know, when you're starting to feel anxious, um, you know, take that time to really connect with what makes you feel good. So reading, you know, made you feel good, tapping into your community, your church, praying, um, helped a lot of folks get through <laughs> the pandemic. And so, you know, I know that during that time, you know, we would see the teachers, we would see the um what is it, medical professionals, and people were always like trying to show thanks to yeah. you guys and bringing food and things like that. Okay, are they still doing things like that? Do you, <laughs> is your organization still doing Teacher Appreciation Week? You know, do you feel like we're being celebrated enough? <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's a little so, bit of... Uh... <laughs> it's, it's so funny because when the pandemic started, 
oh my goodness, all of the videos and oh my gosh, we have to stay home with our kids. Like, oh my gosh, you do this all the time. And as a teacher, it was just so funny watching because you're handling your one child and we have 16 of them. And so right. that's always just funny to watch. Um, I do feel that during the pandemic, we were appreciated a little bit more um, just because now parents are having to take on that extra step of teaching their children or making sure their child is um, online or doing right. what they're supposed to do. Um, whereas they didn't have that as much when your child is in a building away from you for about eight hours a day. Yeah. Um, so that was kind of funny. Um, but now I do still feel appreciated. Um, field trips are always a great way for parents to appreciate you. <laughs> Um, oh, okay. Just, you know, to volunteer so that they can see. Um, I love being able to mm. also have parents just come in um, and maybe read a book or maybe volunteer during lunch or um, just finding a creative way for them to come in uh, uh, for certain um, holidays and things like that, just so that they're able to get a glimpse of what we go through right. daily. Um, but I do I do still feel um, that we're appreciated to a, to a certain extent. Um, I know that I may not feel it from my parents all the time, but I know my mm -hmm. students show it all yeah. the time. Um, parent, uh, teachers don't take for granted um, all the cards that you might get or the random pictures that are drawn yeah. um, because that's just showing they're thinking about you when they're not with you. And so yeah. I don't keep all of them, but I do appreciate <laughs> the ones that I do get. And also my church does still do it. They actually just had a teacher appreciation dinner um, nice last night actually nice, so nice. They had a chiropractor come out and they had a teacher store that they set up for all free school items and um they had a this guy who owns a gym and he you know he said I really want teachers and it's funny because he was talking about how for working out you think that you don't have time but if you just start with 30 minutes, you know, twice a week. And in my head, I'm like, 30 minutes? Who has 30 minutes, you know, right. to work out? <laughs> and he said, no, just find 30 minutes twice a week. Yeah. And that just, you know, it changes your mindset to putting yourself first. And then they also had a speaker come. Um, she does a wonderful uh, meal prep program, um, well fed. And so that was just really cool because she was talking about it's so easy to go to McDonald's or a fast food mm -hmm. place, um, but really looking at the long-term part of it and how meal prepping is just, oh, I don't need to um, spend money or I don't need to eat unhealthy because it's already made at home. So right. I did start doing meal preps, um, doing it myself and also going to her. Um, and it's a game changer. I, right. I just want to throw that out there. <laughs> Um, because I just feel good. I feel energized. I feel ready to go. I feel like I accomplished something when I right. put my meals together. Um, and so them being able to do that for teachers yesterday, there were about 150 teachers um, that were there. It was just really nice to um, just see everyone's face be so excited to feel yeah. the appreciation um, because we don't hear it as, as much as we used to um, during the pandemic. But it's nice to still... Um, be recognized and seen. Okay, so we might have talked offline because so I, that, that event sounds so, no, 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 I'm saying that event sounds so nice. I need to know what this church is uh, because, I mean, I've heard of teacher appreciation, but they brought in a whole bunch of resources. So other people, I hope you're taking tips, parents, uh, school systems, charter schools, take tips on how from this conversation on how you can give back to your teachers for the amazing work that they're doing, even learning how to meal prep and just taking time out for yourself to work out. That's all about, you know, taking care of your temple, your mental health and keeping you right for you to be able to educate our future. Yeah. So, you know, I said, that sounds like a great way to appreciate um, our teachers and I hope more people um, do it. So as we are um, almost closing out this, this um, interview, I wanted to ask you, what would you say to new teachers, um, even other colleagues um, about how to effectively manage, you know, their mental health, their physical, and you kind of touched on it emotionally, <laughs> you know, you, you touched on it already, but you know, let's um, 
give a few more nuggets on how they maintain that during, you know, these hard times, especially when they're feeling a little anxious? Um, for me, I'm going to say pray. That That is my number one. That's my go-to. Um, before I go to a human being, I'm going to go to my father and because he already knows how I'm feeling. So I'm yeah. just going to lay it all out. I'm nervous. I'm anxious. Um, I'm <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, you know, and just being honest because I feel like when I'm honest with him, I'm honest with myself. I'm mm. that he already knows. And so really um, just leading into be honest with yourself. If you are feeling burnt out, if you are feeling anxious, if you are feeling nervous, take the time to actually figure out what is making you anxious. Is it a parent conversation that you may have coming up? Is it a student that you're worried about or student that you're scared of. Like, let's be honest, you know, um, just really taking the time to recognize what is um, the underlying root of the problem and then figure out how to solve it. I feel like a lot of people will feel, find out the root of the problem and then mm -hmm. keep it. Oh, this is a problem and I'm going to complain about it. But really now looking at the next step of how do I solve this? Um, Maybe it's talking to your principal or your higher up person. Um, maybe it's talking to a colleague who is going to encourage you instead of going to the yes colleague who's going to say, I had that kid last year and mm. me. you know, you don't want to keep a negative, um, a negative train going. You kind of want to get off <laughs> and try right. something different um, and just reading, try to figure out different resources of how to reconnect with yourself, um, figure out what do you like to do, find a new hobby. Um, I love working with kids. That's just something that I like, but there are other things that I like outside of that. And so I'm starting to venture into those as well, not to take over my job because I don't see me ever leaving teaching, but something added on that still brings yeah. me joy to do, um, walk. I, I started hiking during the pandemic, not like an extensive hiker, like I don't have the gear, but I will go for a walk and just enjoying my surroundings. So mm. it helps. <laughs> it helps a lot. And a lot of these things, and we're honing in this month on specific occupations, but the great thing about it is these tips can be for anyone um, dealing with stress, dealing with, you know, crazy environments. Um, so a lot of the things that you said can be applied to, you know, many people. And it's just kind yeah. of being aware, like you said, just being truthful with yourself, being honest, you know, with yourself and just then not once you have, are you're aware of what's happening and actually doing something about it. And so I love you say, so, you know, you talk to your principal. There's so many teachers that have been in this for a long time. They know, yeah. you know, and you know who you can talk to that's going to, like you said, going to give you some actual um, tips and some actual advice and not just kind of complaining about it. We all have those people. So like just kind of knowing you can tap into all these different resources to deal with your mental health, which is so very important again, because you guys are, you know, uh, educating our future. And so we want you guys to be in your best mental health and feeling great, feeling in shape, feeling physically um, where you want to be. So I really appreciate you taking the time out to share with us. You had a lot, a lot of great information. So I hope you guys are, you know, writing notes. You know, we like to be very resourceful here at Fun Times Magazine. So thank you, Kirby, so much for taking the time out. Uh, we will let you get back to the little ones. Uh, <laughs> but we thank you so much for what you do. And we thank all of the teachers for your commitment to our students, your commitment to your work and being so diligent in what you do. We appreciate you so very much, teachers. And we are also doing this again for Mental Health Awareness Month. So make sure you guys stay tuned to Fun Times Magazine on social media or our website for the other interviews that we have coming up. Take care. Thank you, everyone.